We're building a city, we're building a city, digging and pounding, we're working all together, building for the teacher, the milkman, the book. Hello friends, and welcome back to The Daily Compulsion, your home for helpful Lego videos. Today I'm going to talk about cleaning and ironing Lego sails and show how I do it. The reason I am doing this is because earlier this year, I decided to attempt to collect all of the original classic pirate sets, or pirate's eye, as Brickling calls it. Contained in my acquisitions were some sales that were not in the best of shape. After looking online and not finding a lot of great videos on this topic, I decided to give back to the community and share what I have learned. I hope that you will find this video entertaining and helpful. Like with almost every other thing that I ever want to know about, I started my search at google.com. I typed in the text, how to clean Lego sales. The first video result is from some lady seven years ago giving instructions in German. The next two video results are from an inactive YouTube channel of a guy named Coobers. The first website result is a thread from the Eurobricks forums dating to even before Coobers' videos, 2008. Passing over posts that give Reddit-like advice, such as not putting these expensive items in the washing machine, using bar soap to clean them, and one poster saying he had luck putting them in a dishwasher. I had to read all the way until page two of this thread before I found a helpful post. Whenever I've needed to wash a dirty sail, I've soaked it in cold water with a small amount of laundry detergent, no bleach, for a few minutes, then sloshed it around for a few minutes, then let it soak a few minutes more. I'm usually pretty gentle with it because, as others have said, repeated heavy agitation will cause the sails to fray. Once I'm happy with the sail, I wash it off well with cold water. Next, I iron the sail to dry it out and keep it straight. This method has never failed me, and the colors look great. I can't make any guarantees, but in my experience, anything that is safe for colored laundry has worked for Lego sails. The location of this poster says USA, so I am inclined to trust that he knows what he is talking about. I have already tried this method a few times myself, and I have had decent results. Some of the sails I'm going to be cleaning today are the three sails from set number 6289, Redbeard Runner. Or maybe they're actually from set number 6290, Pirate Battleship. Who knows? Either way, the stripes are supposed to be white and dark gray, and if you ask me, the white looks a little yellowed and dull. The dark gray doesn't look very great either, and is noticeably darker on the sail with the skull and crossbones on it. I'm wondering if what I'm seeing here might actually be sun damage. Which would be a bit more difficult, er, impossible to clean off. For those of you who care about such things, these are Bricklink part numbers, sale BB11, sale BB12, and sale BB13. Another cloth piece that came with the Redbeard Runner set is this small flag on the left, part number X376PX4. Who in the world is coming up with these part numbers? Get it together, Bricklink. Sheesh! This is getting the same treatment today, as are these other two small sails that you see here. The black striped one in the center belongs to set number 6262, King Kahuka's Throne, and the blue one on the right is for set number 6273, Rock Island Refuge. They are part numbers Sail BB01 and Sail BB27, respectively. I realize that without reference, these sails might appear bigger than they actually are. I was pretty surprised when I got the blue one in the mail after purchasing it on eBay as I worked to complete the Rock Island Refuge. For the benefit of your understanding, here is one of the sales we just looked at for a comparison. If I zoom in on the black sail, you can see some brownish colored spots on the white stripes. 
If these don't come out in a first pass of washing, I will show you my own personal trick. It involves dangerous chemicals, so make sure to watch to the end. The blue stripe sail has its own unpleasant spot, all the way to the left in the center of the sail. We'll see if that comes out in this process as well. While we are here, we might as well talk about a word you may have come across if you were also doing research on the topic of Lego sails. The word is fraying. The sail for the Rock Island Refuge, the blue striped one, has some pretty noticeable fraying, while the other sail here does not appear to have any fraying. This is not some special word made up by the Lego community. It is from the English language, and it means to Lego exactly what it means to normal people to unravel or to come apart. I'm not sure what causes one 31-year-old sail to fray and another 28-year-old sail to be fine, but maybe Lego improved their cutting and finishing process between the three-year time period when these two sails were manufactured. What I do know and can tell you with assertive confidence right now is that if your sail does have some fraying happening, do not light it afire and definitely do not pull on the threads. That literally only makes it worse. Thank you. So here I have an old Tupperware container that I acquired years ago when my friend Jonathan baked me cookies as a going away present when I was moving. This Tupperware is damaged on the corners in such a way that the cover is actually cracked, as if it had been dropped from a distance onto a hard surface, or possibly struck with great force against someone's skull in an effort to harm them. This prevents the lid from sealing completely, which is the whole point of Tupperware. I think that this is why Jonathan used it to contain the going away cookies, because he didn't mind me taking his damaged Tupperware halfway across the country and never giving it back. I often use this container to soak batches of used, dirty Lego. I would never, ever put cookies into it again. However, it should be fine for washing these sails. So here's what we're going to be using to clean the sails today in addition to the cold water. Apparently any color safe laundry detergent should be fine and when I did this before I just used what we had in the laundry room. Going back to the post from Eurobricks we see that the poster was as specific as saying he used a small amount of laundry detergent, no bleach which leaves it pretty much open-ended. Last time I did this, I just used whatever we had in the laundry room, but in some further reading online, I did see several people suggest this OxyClean Color Boost, which is supposed to actually brighten the colors. So let's see how this works. I've made the assumption that the average viewer knows how to procure cold water and put it into a container like this. So I didn't bother filming that step of the process. I'm going to go ahead and pour a little bit of this OxyClean into the cup. Yeah, that looks good. Now I'll put the lid back on and try to mix it around. All right, nice and soapy. All right, let's get that first sail. Yeah, so it's pretty much as simple as this. Put the sail in, move it around. I'm just gonna go ahead and do all three of these together. The poster said that he lets it soak for a couple minutes and then sloshes it around. So I guess I'll put the cover back on and slosh it around. And he said he did this for a few minutes. I'm rather impatient. Again, he does mention that you want to be gentle because you don't want the sails to fray, which we talked about earlier. All right, that's two minutes and 24 seconds of sloshing around. And then he lets it soak for a few minutes more. So I'll let it soak for a few more minutes and then I'll take it to the cold water. Okay, I think that's enough time. I'm going to go ahead and rinse out the sails now. Again, with cold water, according to that Eurobricks poster.
you know what's interesting I just noticed is that those other two sails are only they only have the gray stripes on the one side but this one has the gray stripes on both sides probably because of the way that this sail is oriented when uh, the whole set when the set is built and the sail is attached to the rest of the pirate ship All right, so once they're rinsed off, I place them on this old beach towel that uh, I also use for drying Lego. And I'm going to take them upstairs now and iron them before they dry out. It looks like they're going to dry fairly quickly. They were just soaking wet, uh, you know, just a moment ago. And uh, they're already dry or already drying. Okay, the way that this works is you ask your mom where the ironing board is and the iron plug in the iron, wait till it gets nice and hot, and get a clean towel. So once you have the towel, go ahead and lay down one of your sails. Put the sail on top of the towel, fold the towel over, and then just go ahead and start ironing. I have a couple times ironed directly on the sail and that's generally not a great idea. If you do do that, make sure you turn the iron to a much lower setting than I have it on right now. Again, I have it on maximum because I'm rather impatient and I like to get things done. And uh, I figure if some heat is good, then um, a whole bunch of heat must be great. I'm happy with that. I'm gonna go ahead and just place it on my hard table, my flat table, and iron another one. Why am I still wearing the gloves? All right. I'm going to call this good. Once again, they're still wet, so I'm going to let them dry on a flat surface. And I didn't forget about my smaller sails. I'm doing those ones too. Same process. They've been soaking for a couple minutes. Now I'm going to slosh them around. Okay, here's the little sails that had the spots. The black sail is noticeably better, except for the one spot up there, which is still pretty visible. You can still see the other ones down there, but overall it looks a lot better than it did previously. And that dark spot on the left side of this blue and white sail is practically gone. I'm really happy with that. So. I think I'm going to leave that one alone because as you can see, my washing of the sail contributed to additional fraying. There's one giant thread that's falling off now. The little red flag looks fine, but let me show you what I'm going to do to try to further get rid of these spots on the black and white sail. So here's the sail on the other side, and as you can see, the spots look pretty bad still, but... Here's my secret weapon. So because the spots are on the white stripes and obviously not on the black stripes, perhaps those spots are on the black stripes, but we just can't see them because the stripes are black. Because they're on the white stripes, I feel confident in using actual bleach to try to get rid of them. So what I do here is I take a paper towel, I fold it, or crumple it onto itself a bunch of times. That should be good. Okay. And then I pour a little bit of bleach on it. Okay. 
Then what I'm going to do is just run it along the white lines over the spots. This particular one is, I don't like to mess with it because it's right over the hole. And uh, if I agitate that, that could lead to more fraying. I wonder what happened. Maybe somebody heard something really funny when they had coffee in their mouth near this pirate ship and they spit it all over. I'd rather have an intelligent enemy than a stupid friend. <laughs> Okay, so after several passes with the bleached paper towel, I can still see the spots. I don't know if it actually looks all that better. I'll have to compare the before and after once I go back and watch this video. Even though I can still see the spots, I'm going to just stop because I don't like scrubbing or being abrasive against the sail with a paper towel that contains a harsh chemical like bleach as much as I do want it to be clean. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and rinse this out with cold water once again, and I will take it back upstairs and iron this one just like I'm doing with the other ones. Here is a before and after comparison. I think the results speak for themselves, but the difference is so drastic I am thinking that I had a different light on when I captured that before image. I have recorded this video over the course of several days and now I wish I had remembered to make note of what the lighting was like in the room as well as the position of the sails on the table. Speaking of the table, you can see it is more of a gray color in the before pic and way more white in the after pic. So I think the lighting is playing a role here, but the sails definitely look better than they did before I washed them, obviously. Also, the ironing really took care of the curling and flattened them out nicely. Once again, here are the small sails. And once again, the lighting is different in my two images, but the spots on the black sail are almost imperceptible now, and the one dark spot on the blue sail is basically gone. The pirate flag looks exactly the same, but now it smells nicer, which is obviously an important aspect of a pirate flag. So the last thing I do is put the sails away and store them safely. The way that I go about doing this is I take a comic book bag. If you collect comic books, you should be familiar with comic book bags to store your comic book safely. A regular comic book size bag is not big enough for this particular sail and some of the other ones from the classic pirate sets, but a golden age size bag is the perfect size to store the sails. It's just wide enough to let that sail sit in there comfortably. And I also will take a, what is called a backing board. Uh, again, if you're familiar with comic book collecting, then you're familiar with one of these. I took a magazine sized board and cut it down to size to fit in here. And we'll go ahead and do that right now. I print off a little label so I know what set this cell goes to. And I put all three of them plus the flag in the same bag. It would be easier to insert them upside down as the tops of the sails are narrower, more narrow than the bottoms. However, I feel like that's bad luck or something. And I will tuck the little flag in there. Let it rest on top. Okay, and there you have it. And also I have little bags for the two little sails, again with pieces of backing board cut to size. So that's the entire process. I will tape that up and close it, but I appreciate you watching. I hope that you've enjoyed this video. Until next time, this is The Daily Compulsion. 
We're building a city, we're building a city, digging and pounding, we're working all together, building for the teacher, the milkman, the butcher, building for the grocer, the postman too, building for the doctor, the fireman, the children, building for the newsman, the painter too. We're building a city, we're building a city, digging and pounding, we're working all together.